Hey there, I'm Liz. Welcome to my channel. Today we're building this built-in library bookshelf, so come along, let's DIY the damn thing. So we are in Jack's room. He has been getting into reading like crazy. And so this little Ikea unit that I had originally bought for him is just not cutting it anymore. Hi. Hi, no. <laughs> so I have decided to take an unused wall in this room and turn it into a library wall. So we're going to do full floor to ceiling bookshelves and this is going to be sort of like a partial Ikea hack. We're going to use Billy bookcases for the bottom shelves and then we're going to fill from the top of those to the ceiling with some custom made shelves. Let's go! So I did a quick mock-up just to see how these would look and then I headed out to Ikea. I ended up deciding to get three of the 16 inch wide and then one of the 32 inch wide just so that center section was a little wider so we had more room to put stuff on the bookshelf. I put in all the shelves at the levels I wanted them and started prepping by filling all the bracket holes then pulled these outside to start sanding. After sanding these all got a coat of primer. I used Zinzer Bin Primer which works really well on Ikea furniture. It adheres super well to that laminate finish. I used my Graco X7 sprayer and put two coats on all four for Billy bookcases. So I forgot to film how I attached these to the wall and I did have to do a little bit of finagling just because the back panels on these shelves are not flush to the wall. So I had to do something to fill that little like half inch gap. So this would be like the vertical walls of that bookshelf and this is the back panel and here you can see there's this gap here. So I don't want to screw in here with this gap because it's gonna bow this back wall of the bookshelf. When I put in a little piece of filler there, now this is filled and I can screw through here, through the plywood, through the drywall and into the studs. So I made sure to measure on the wall where those studs were. That way when I pressed the bookcase against the wall, I still knew where those studs were. And I didn't have to do that to these ones up top because these ones I built from scratch. So they are actually flush against the back wall there. So let's get into how I built that top section of the library from scratch. I used cabinet grade plywood for that section and started by cutting all of my pieces. I used cutlistoptimizer.com to make my cut map and use my plywood as efficiently as possible to avoid waste. I used one sheet of four by eight foot plywood and then a smaller two by four foot sheet to get all of the pieces I needed to assemble this top section. After sanding everything smooth, I used my Craig pocket hole jig to drill the pocket holes for the side pieces, then used corner clamps to hold everything square while I screwed them together. I flipped everything over and screwed in the other panel, again using those corner clamps to help keep the box square while I screwed things in place. With the boxes built, I needed to cut out the back panel, so I just traced the boxes onto my sheet of hardboard and then cut that out with my circular saw. These backs got nailed on, then it was time to take them inside to mark and install the vertical dividers. I wanted these verticals to follow the verticals from the Billy bookcases below, so everything felt seamless and built in. With everything measured and marked, I brought these top sections down again and used wood glue and brad nails to install all of those vertical elements. Now that the top sections are completely built, it's time to get those out to the spray booth and primed. These also get two coats of that Zinzer bin primer and then back inside they go to get permanently installed up at the top of that bookshelf. Okay, now this is where things start to look really good. Once trim starts going on, it starts to feel like this thing has been here all along. I used a few different widths of trim to cover all the edges and fill any gaps and my compound sliding miter saw and brad nailer were my BFFs during this whole process. Having a cordless brad nailer for this is absolutely clutch. This thing is by far one of my favorite and most used tools. I've got the Ryobi HP One Plus Brad Nailer and it is a workhorse. With all the trim installed, I moved on to filling all the nail holes with wood filler and sanding those smooth. Then I got to caulking all of the edges and seams. These steps take a little bit longer, but they are absolutely necessary for this thing to look totally built in and perfect. The final step is getting this thing painted. I went with Bear's Scuff Defense paint because I knew books and toys would be rubbing these shelves. I got the color Bit of Sugar in a satin finish and chose to brush and roll with a dense foam roller, mostly because the thought of masking everything off in this room and dragging my sprayer indoors sounded atrocious. I'd originally planned on painting this the same yellow as the ceiling, but ended up liking how clean and fresh it felt white, so I knew I needed a pop of color in a different way. So I grabbed these velvet curtains from Amazon and they were absolutely perfect. Somebody wants to be the one who's gonna woo me. 
<laughs> okay, with Jack's stamp of approval, it's time to get these bookshelves all styled and all of Jack's books in there. This top section ended up being the perfect height for my vintage globe collection that I have been amassing since oh, around 2010. So those went in first. And then I just started filling in with all of Jack's books, some of his little toys, some of the cute little things that I have collected. He's got his little Lug guitar in there. And we've got plenty of room for more books as Jack grows and acquires more books. I'm really excited for this to grow with him and have him be able to fill it out with his things as he gets more items from his fandoms and the things that he really loves so that he can display them. This might be my favorite build that I've done to date. I am just so in love with how this adds so much functionality to this room without losing almost any square footage in this entire space. Let me know in the comments if you'd build a built-in library wall in your space and don't forget to subscribe to see more as we DIY the damn thing on this house.